AMD Ryzen Minis are all the rage right now, and we're looking at another contender. The Maxstang T0 FP750. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? This one's a new design from Maxstang, available in white or grey. So, does it stand out from the crowd? Does it use glued on rubber feet? Can you boil an egg on top of it? Those questions, and more, will be answered in a very concise manner, because I respect your time. Except for that bit. And that. Max Tang's T0 is made of plastic and has a glossy, slippery feel that doesn't show fingerprints. The build itself doesn't feel completely solid, with the sides creaking and flexing with a bit of pressure. Looks wise, it's a mashup of a few designs we've seen before. Inside the T0 is AMD's Ryzen 8845HS processor, 8 cores, 16 threads with a Radeon 780M graphics. And it's one of the better value CPUs out there if you need a high performance mini PC. Pricing starts from 619 US dollars and there's a coupon code linked in the video description for $100 off, which brings it down to 519 for the lowest configuration. Shipping is included in the price. So what do you get for the dollars? Apart from the mini PC, there's a compact power supply, VESA mount, HDMI, manual and screws. The front of the Mini has dual USB 3 and a USB-C 10 gigabit data port, as well as an audio jack. Wireless and Bluetooth is handled by an Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200. On the back is an Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN port, USB 4, which supports power delivery and display using a USB-C monitor, USB 2, DisplayPort 1.4, and HDMI 2.0. At least another USB 2 on the back would have been good for wired mouse and keyboard setups. Overall, a pretty basic port selection to what we've seen before. Let's have a look inside it. Hello darkness, my old friend. We always get reacquainted. Rip those off, four screws, lift the lid, and we have dual Gen 4 M.2 NVMe slots for storage. No active cooling on the RAM, and there's an M.2 Wi-Fi card. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed, and the Malwarebytes scan came up clean. Ubuntu worked fine off the USB drive. All right, let's hit the benchmarks. I've already reviewed two minis with the Ryzen 8845HS, so that's a good comparison point. In single core, the Max Tang T0 was close to the other two. Multicore is where there's a noticeable drop. Turns out the T0 is running at a lower power limit of 45 watts. After upping it in the BIOS to 54 watts, Max Tang's mini PC pretty much matches the other two at the default power setting. Geekbench single core matches up with the Cinebench results and is closer to the other two in multi core. Next, we look at the T Zero's video encoding capabilities. Not much has changed, it approximately matches the other two only when the power limit has been increased. AV1 is a much longer test and now it's behind. Same with the AV1 hardware encoding benchmark, which offloads the workload to the integrated graphics. Moving on to 3D Mark. The T0 scores around what the 780M should be doing in both DX11 and DX12 tests. The difference between them isn't significant. Steel Nomad, again, no surprises. In the previous Radeon 780M games test, we tried 4K low for some interesting results. This time we're doing 1440p low for most games. Counter-Strike 2 holds up decently at 1440p with around a 100fps average. League of Legends runs fine at 4K, so no surprise even maxed out at 1440p is getting a couple hundred frames. Valorant holds a frame rate above 144fps. and Dota 2 maxed out with an average above 60 FPS. For the non-esports games, we're going to have to add some FSR upscaling. Cyberpunk is above 30 FPS, but still has various image quality issues due to upscaling. In God of War Ragnarok, FSR allows you to almost hit 60 FPS at 1440p. Space Marine 2 runs too slow for my liking.
And Forza Horizon 5 can hold a good frame rate with no upscaling. The final game test is to check if the DDR5 memory overheats over time, which has been a problem with some minis that lack active cooling. 30 minutes later and the frame rate is unchanged with the dims under 75C, so it looks to be okay. The USB 4 port allows you to connect an eGPU and now I can showcase it with an upgraded RTX 4070 Super. Here's the walking simulator Hellblade 2 running at 4K. Emulation wise PS2, GameCube and Wii will all be full speed at 1440p but going up to Wii U is where you won't see 60fps with the hardest to emulate titles. And the performance difference between PS3 games is wide, but something like Wipeout plays well at 1440p. For the audio production test, I use latency mon while running Cinebench in the background to really push the mini PC, and the T0 didn't pass the test, which could indicate dropouts when multitasking during audio recording. 4K video editing in Premiere works pretty well. Those wanting to use a mini PC primarily for video editing are best off going for one with an Intel CPU. In the BIOS you can set the VRAM size in AMD CBS, NBIO common options. FCH has AC power loss options and SMU common options allows you to increase the power limit. Default is 45 watts, but I received a new BIOS after testing had been completed, which allows you to go up all the way to 65. In hardware monitor, you can change the fan curve, and there's RTC wake settings, and that's about it. A Gen 4 NVMe SSD is included, but it's not particularly speedy, and is even beaten by a couple of Gen 3 drives in the 3D Mark test. The SSD temp isn't great when thrashed. A larger heatsink would have helped. Bluetooth range is pretty average, but happy to report there weren't any Wi-Fi issues with the T0 at 12 meters or 39 feet using the 5G band. No network problem notifications popped up during the Valorant game session. An idle power draw of 12 watts is on the higher side, but the maximum was the lowest of the 8845HS minis, even when comparing the 54 watt performance mode. In the experimental efficiency test, we look at how much power the mini draws from the wall in the opening scene of Rise of the Tomb Raider at 720p low, locked to 60fps. Max Tang was drawing slightly higher than the K8 Plus with the same CPU. Out of the box, the CPU temp is pretty good, and there's a sharp jump going up to the 54 watt mode, peaking at 90C. Load fan noise is above average, especially when you take the lower power mode into account. And the fan pitch isn't the nicest. At 0.91 liters in volume, the T0 is one of the bigger mini PCs we've looked at. And with all that out of the way, it's conclusion time. Max Tang's T0 has a lower maximum power draw than other comparable minis we've looked at. It comes with a compact power supply. The plastic used is fingerprint resistant, which is nice. However, I would like to see more USB ports and additional cooling underneath, at least for the SSD. Fan noise is also higher than the competition. So that's the Max Tang T0 FP750. You can find it linked in the video description if you're interested, but if you're after something low priced with much less performance under $250, US check out my top 5 budget mini PC list right here. Cheers!